How did you feel uh, when Nicki Minaj used your father's image uh, for her, si her single? I knew that Nicki Minaj just didn't know any better. She didn't realize that um, that my father took that picture shortly after his home was firebombed because no one was protecting him or his babies. That was his concern. You know, he had three little babies, six, four, two years old. He had an infant and his wife was pregnant and he was getting threats. His home had been firebombed and he said, if no one will protect me, I have a rifle and I will protect my family. But sometimes, you know, people began to believe the hype that Malcolm was this person of violence when Malcolm was seeking to end this violence that was being perpetrated and committed against his people or any, any person. So my father, you know, so a lot of young people were misinformed. And, and again, it was my reason for writing my books so that they were clearly aware. Because I know that Nikki, especially coming from New York, she loves Malcolm X. You know, most of the people in the hip hop world and the hip hop nation, they, they idolize Malcolm. They respect his, his um, you know, that he was fearless. You know, he didn't fear man. He, he was serving God and he, he knew he had that protection. And so, you know, I, I am very clear that when people, you know, portray the wrong image, that they are just misinformed. Sure. Now, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King had very different philosophies. You know, uh, Martin Luther King was very nonviolent in, in his philosophy. Malcolm X was by any means necessary. Um, so I believe the media kind of hyped up sort of a, a, a tension between these two people. But from someone who actually knows, what was really the relationship between Malcolm X and Martin Luther King? When we learn about Thomas Jefferson, we learn about Thomas Jefferson. When we learn about George Washington, we learn about George Washington. And we're never um, taught to choose one over the other. When we learn about um, Malcolm X, we're taught it's either Malcolm X or Dr. King. It's either W.E.B. Du Bois or Booker T. Washington. It's either Tupac or Biggie Smalls. Instead of being so happy and grateful that we have these strong, powerful, dynamic men of color. No, absolutely. And you're actually close to the King family yourself. Right. Um, my mother and Aunt Coretta, you know, were, I thought she was my aunt when I was growing up. You know, I thought she was my blood aunt. I didn't know that she was Dr. King's wife and that they became friends because they were involved in the same work. And that was getting rid of this injustice that continues to engulf our communities. No, ab absolutely. Um, do you feel that it's a crime that there is no Malcolm X holiday, you know, celebrated nationwide? I don't feel it's a crime, but what I, I do believe is that since he sacrificed his life for all of us and, and, and you know, was just fearless and all of what he did and, and all of what he gave to us, because, you know, we really thought we were Negroes back before my father said, you know, we are from Africa. You know, we thought we were Negroes. And, you know, my father said, Chinese people go to China, Italian people go to Italy, Negroes can't go to Negro land. There is no such thing. And so we have to embrace who we are, understand who we are. Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud, Black Lives Matter, all of these things are very important because for so long we have been miseducated. Not just black people, but all Americans and the entire world has been miseducated about the significant contributions of Africa and African um, people, of people of the African diaspora, people of color, period, the indigenous people of this land. So, sure. you know, yeah, that's how I feel. When you look at the, the racial climate in America today and you compare it to, to what was going on in the 60s, um, do you feel that it's, it's worse? Or do you feel that there's just more cameras now and it's always been the same way? Oh, absolutely. It's been, it has continued because we continue to not address what the real issues are. We are miseducated. We are misinformed. We have to talk about the Holocaust of African people. We talk about the Holocaust of Jewish people. We should learn from them. The, the Holocaust of Jewish people happened in Europe. 
and we're talking about it and we know about it here in America. So we need to learn from them. It's a significant crime committed against their humanity and they make sure the world knows so that it never happens again. The children grow up pr proud of who they are in spite of this Holocaust, in spite of this crime committed against their humanity and they vow never to forget. So I think it's important that our true history is included in our educational curriculum so that our young people, all of them, it doesn't matter, black, white, red, yellow, pink, brown, gay, straight, binary, gender, whatever we are, Muslim, agnostic, Christian, that we have to be properly educated and it's the adult's responsibility to make sure that our young people are. If we see our young people doing something, we can't talk about them, we have to better inform, better nurture, better teach them. Yeah. When you talk about like, you know, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement that's happening right now, you see a lot of black celebrities say all lives matter, not quite understanding what that means and then having to go back and apologize and so forth. You know, from your point of view, can you can you help people explain the difference between Black Lives Matter and all lives matter? Well, again, I think that, you know, if we just want to look at our educational curriculum, right? Our children don't learn much about anything about, you know, the enslaved African people who cultivated a barren land. You know, we don't learn anything about Nat Turner, Frederick Douglass, Malcolm X, Denmark Vesey, Harriet Tubman. We don't learn the significant contributions that they made to our society. The Herndons, the um, Douglasses. we don't learn anything about them. And so what it says is that your life systemically it says that your life doesn't matter. Black life doesn't matter. It is very clear that there is blatant disrespect for black life. We're not talking about the people who are celebrities and who have jobs. We're not talking about those who make millions. We're talking about the significant amount of people who are behind the prison bars, who didn't commit these crimes. You know, 2.6 million people of color behind bra uh, bars, brown and black children behind bars who are now out of, uh, you know, they don't have the same opportunities of voting and all these other things. And so it says systemically that black lives do not matter. And so it's important that we reiterate that yes, our lives do matter. Yes, our lives do matter. But I think it's most important that our educational curriculum is inclusive of these significant contributions, had it not be, been for these brilliant former architects, former farmers, musicians, um, priests, scholars, that we would not have been able to call this beautiful country, um, the, uh, which they cultivated into a land of milk and honey, the United States of America, our homes. And so we owe them, we must honor you know, them. What do you think about the whole situation? Man, my point of view, man, I really feel like they tried to paint a, a bad picture on my brother and tried to make him look like, like he was a hater. Uh, it was some envy, jealousy type shit, you know what I'm saying? And actuality, you know what I'm saying? Bro been having this shit, man. He been in the condo. I got my hat on and I had my Coke bottles up under my hat. And I'm sitting at the dinner table like an asshole with the hat on, knowing she's gonna tell me to take it off. And I'm just sitting there just gawping down, you know, in my zone. She said, take that goddamn hat off at the dinner table. I'm like, come on, mom. Coat everywhere. 